giving the Celtics an appropriate amount of love for their defense. I didn't do that the other night. Plus, a look ahead, interesting things that could impact this road trip. And can the Celtics hop in if Chicago starts selling? It's going to be tough. I'm talking about it right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here in the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. I got you fresh, free podcasts every Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts when they play on the weekends like they do this week on a Friday night. Bonus podcasts this week. Uh, actually, this Saturday and next Saturday are the only times this month uh, I'm no longer, I'm not podcasting. It's that many podcasts for you. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. I'm John Corrales. If you're new to the show, I used to play. Now I'm uh, paid to cover the team for Boston Sports Journal. Basically, I'm covering it for you on written, on podcasts, audio, whatever. So subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, lots to get to today. Later on in the third segment, the Chicago Bulls, Zach Levine, are open to um, open to potentially a trade, and which means Chicago could be blowing it up. I don't give a damn about Zach Levine. What I am going to say is, Alex Caruso, that name's popping up. Can the Celtics get in on that? Uh, it's going to be difficult. We'll talk about that in the third segment. Uh, some interesting ha things happened there on the second. Uh, this this some interesting things happen. I'm going to start over there. <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. Some interesting interesting thing happened on on Tuesday night that could impact the Celtics road trip. I don't even know what I was trying to say before. I'll talk about that next, but I did not give the Celtics defense its appropriate amount of love after the win over New York. They forced uh, multiple 24 second violations. They were able to get in, in there and, and hold the Knicks to less than a hundred points. They were able to step up when the Celtics, uh, when, when the Knicks were trying to make their runs and it was the defense that they just didn't get enough uh, attention, I think, because Tatum had this big, massive fourth quarter. And, you know, Porzingis was was really good and, and Jalen was pretty good and all of that. So uh, I think the Celtics defense needs to, to have uh, a little bit of a, a moment in the spotlight. And that is uh, a credit to Joe Missoula for kind of getting the things that weren't working. For example, the drop coverage with Kristaps Porzingis. I think that was a major culprit. Uh, Jalen Brown started out the game on Jalen Brunson, and he was chasing over the top, which is what you do in, in drop coverage, right? You, The whole point is you want to push the ball handler into a mid-range shot. And Brunson hit a bunch of those mid-range shots, so he was chasing over the top, and, and Porzingis was just way too deep. And I think that's something that Porzingis is going to have to fix. Uh, that drop coverage, he, he just needs to know when to adjust. When do you drop way, way, way down? When do you come closer up, uh, not necessarily to the level of the screen, but when do you when do you step up a little bit more to challenge a guy that that can make those shots at a high enough clip. I think Brunson kind of got going a little early because Porzingis was struggling with where to be. Um, and it's funny because I looked at the tracking data and Jalen was the primary defender on, on Brunson. And he, he, when you look at the tracking data, he, he, uh, Brunson got zero points, uh, scored technically zero points on Jalen Brown, but Jalen Brown was the primary defender. And that's, that's where a lot of that happened. He, you know, chasing him over the top of the screen, not, not a strong enough kind of rear view contest, which is, you know, from behind you, you want to kind of make sure that he's uncomfortable. So 
they got to some switching in the second half. Uh, they played a little bit of zone in the second half. They started pressing in the second half. All of that stuff started to really make the Knicks uncomfortable. And I, I just think Joe Mazzulla's defensive adjustments, when he was talking earlier this season about curveballs, he you saw that in this game against New York. You saw some curveballs. Uh, the, the full court press, just to throw off the rhythm that New York was getting into. Uh, the the zone, a couple of a couple of possessions of zone, one of them led to a 24-second violation. The Celtics really executed it well. Uh, they're not, I feel like the zone is something they're they're pulling out every once in a while. I don't, I think I've only I'm not even sure if I saw it um once before, maybe. I know the Celtics are looking at it. I know the Celtics are looking at playing zone. And and using it a couple of times in you know against New York, you know they have it in their back pocket. Maybe they're just not trying to flex it enough so people can't see exactly how they're playing the zone. But you know you play one or two possessions of it and you say, oh wait, now teams teams already now have that. Oh that one possession. Watch for Drew Holiday. Already the book is out on Boston. Watch for Drew Holiday playing the center spot. He he played the middle of the zone. He's playing against your bigs. You have to understand that Drew Holiday is going to be the guy that they unleash on your big and try to help off of that. Uh, it's a way to keep Porzingis roaming and to, to kind of mess with the matchups. But in this one, it worked. And I think the between the pressing in the zone and all of that stuff, the Celtics defense really stepped up, really did a good job. When, like I said in yesterday's podcast, when you when you force like three or four uh, twenty four second violations in a game, you 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 can go a week without seeing one. Uh, there's that that that's impressive. That is super impressive. And I know they didn't have uh, R.J. Barrett, but that's still that's still really really good for you know, the Celtics defense. So uh, I just want to give Missoula the, the credit that, that he deserves, the coaching staff deserves and the players, you know, the credit that they deserve for stepping up uh, and things like rebounding, like Al Horford getting some real big rebounds uh, that all of that stuff, it, it bodes well. It just bodes well. I like the way, um, it's starting to come together, right? And it's not going to be perfect, but if we didn't have last year, I've said this before in the podcast, I think, if we didn't have last year, the year before, kind of sitting there in the back of our heads, maybe we wouldn't be like, maybe, maybe this year we'd be like, oh, this is great. This is, an, this is a team that's figuring itself out. This is, you make your mistakes at this time of year, you build on those, you start adding a couple more things along the way, and this is just a normal progression for a good team. Uh, when they lose a couple of games, people like jump, you know, to to you know crazy takes. But it's this is exactly what they they should be doing. This is exactly what the Celtics should be doing. Throwing in a couple more things, getting that press, uh, that two two one. It's, you use it in so many different scenarios. You just unleash it here or there, and it throws off the rhythm of the other team. They're just, they're in a rhythm. They're in a little bit of a, you know, they're figuring out their, their pace. They, they're getting into the flow of an offense and you just make them make tough decisions. And I feel like that the, the Celtics defense did all of that. Uh, and, and they're going to need it uh, on this road trip, but maybe, maybe not as much considering a couple of things that happen here that I'm going to talk about Next, first, today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Lockdown Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. So whether you're prepping for a, a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire each week, we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out for this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy picks of the week. 
Uh, these are deep cuts, man. Uh, Keontae George, J the Jazz's new starting point guard. Uh, that could be a guy that you get into. Uh, Jacob Gilliard for uh, deeper leagues. He's been starting for the Grizzlies, and I'll get into why he might be a really good put pickup in a, in a second. But let me just say, I'll, I'll tease this ahead. Marcus Smart got hurt. So not only are the Grizzlies really shorthanded, now Smart has gotten hurt. And so Gilliard is going to be a guy that they're going to rely on. So if you're if you're in a deep league or maybe not even just a deep league, if you're looking for assists, if you're looking for someone to step up that's going to be out there and available, he could be the guy because Smart just got hurt uh, about an hour ago at the time I'm recording this. Uh, Skylar Mays is another choice. Uh, and uh, Bilal Kulavali, uh, because the Wizards are a mess. So uh, that's th those are good choices. And Kyle Lowry, who has uh, stepped up now without Tyler Hero. There's a lot of options there, uh, so he could be a strong ad. Josh Lloyd from J Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each other uh, playing, being a perfect fit. Same for your vehicle. Um, with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time, the first time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. I want to thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Locked On has launched their first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel that is awesome couple of developments here as the celtics get ready for this big road trip wednesday night it's philly friday night it's toronto sunday uh it's uh the memphis grizzlies and monday is the charlotte hornets so first of all i would expect Playoff minutes, Celtics ex playoff minutes tomorrow against Philly. So get it, get it, prepare yourself, get yourself ready for 40 minutes for Jason Tatum, 40 minutes for Jalen Brown, 36 minutes to 38 minutes for Kristaps Porzingis, 36 to 38 for, for white and for holiday, maybe only going uh, with that eight man rotation. That's if, that's if Porzingis plays. I got to say, Porzingis, uh, questionable with the knee uh, when uh, Julius Randle banged into him late in the game. There's uh, a little bit of soreness in that right knee. They're going to probably test it out during shoot around and see if he's going to be available to play. So it's possible Porzingis is going to be out. So keep that in mind. But if he plays, I expect playoff type rotation for him. But Philly played. The, I'm recording this on Tuesday night. Philly played. And they played a close game against the Indiana Pacers that they lost. So the Sixers have now dropped into a tie with Boston at eight and two atop the East. And the big thing is you got 37, almost 38 minutes for Joel Embiid, 38 minutes for Maxi, 37 minutes for Tobias Harris on the front end of a back to back. That's going to be tough. And so I would expect the Celtics, I, if I'm Boston, I am going at them hard right away. I'm gonna, I'm trying to press. I'm trying to really put the pressure on them. Take advantage of that, uh, th that back to back. Really put the pressure on them and see what Philly's going to do. How is Philly going to navigate this? Do they even play Joel Embiid on the back to back? I would, I would say they probably wouldn't. They probably shouldn't. But. Uh, we'll see if that's the case. If not, then th that's fine because then the Celtics can really try to uh, push the pace and, and see if they can make a shorthanded team in Philly just kind of 
wilt on the, the back end of a back-to-back. -back. We'll see. We'll see. But that is number one. That's the, the first thing that is, uh, I think, the Celtics going to have, a, a, that's going to benefit the Celtics. That the front end of the back-to-back, -back, a competitive game that Philly ultimately lost. And they're not going to want to lose two in a row at home, but keeping Joel Embiid healthy is going to be the priority. And they played him in the tournament game. Tuesday night's tournament night. So if they're going to sit him on one of the nights, this is the night, even though it's, it's a, a, a game against Boston. I don't know if that's going to be on national TV. Um, it's on ESPN. So, Ooh, he might have to play. He might have to play. So unless they come up with a good reason, he might have to play. So uh, ESPN game, that means the, Player participation rules are in effect. I don't know that 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 to me that's uh, all benefits Boston. So the Celtics could keep this role going and get that win there. They played to Toronto on Friday. Uh, they're a mess, and then on Sunday they have uh, Memphis. They got Memphis and Charlotte in the back to back. So Toronto. Memphis, Charlotte, that stretch makes me especially think that the Celtics are going to play big, big, big minutes, playoff minutes against Philly. Like expect those playoff minutes because against Toronto, I think the Celtics can kind of dial that back. Against Memphis, they definitely can dial it back because Marcus Smart got hurt. Now I'm going to Memphis. I, I set up this trip to go to Memphis and – um. The whole thing was to talk to Marcus Smart. Now he might still talk to the media because it's Boston, and he might just be in the in the arena, hurt and and there and available. So you know it's still worth going. And I'll be talking to Marcus Smart, and I'll be sharing what he says, and maybe even playing some of what he says uh, for uh, for you here on the on the podcast, just so you can because it, it'll be interesting. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure everybody. The one question we're going to want answered that he'll never answer honestly, uh, or maybe he'll answer honestly and he'll just be real when he says he wants to, be, you know, he likes it in Memphis. But uh, the number one question I have is, "Are you good? How, how you feeling, Mark? Are you good? Are you good here? Because uh, it's been a tough, it's been a tough break. All the injuries, tough start to the season. Uh, I he hasn't he hasn't been on a team that's been this bad in a long, long time. So." But the Marcus Smart injury now now puts Memphis just it's one more good player that's not playing, and so Memphis is 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 going to have a rough spot there. So Toronto on the back, to, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Philly in the back to back that that should be a win. Toronto should be a win. Memphis should be a win. Charlotte should be a win. These are all teams that Boston should beat. Now that means that there's probably one game in there that Boston could struggle with, uh, but. Uh, maybe, maybe there's, if they can keep this role going, that's what four games keep, keep this going. That, that would be a seven game winning streak. And obviously they would be 12 and two to start the season. That'd be a hell of a start to the season. Uh, so those, those developments make this road trip seem just a little bit easier. It's not easy for the Chicago Bulls. I can tell you that much. The Chicago Bulls are going to be sellers. I'll be talking about this in the Lockdown NBA podcast when I record with Jake Madison. But the Celtics aren't going to get in on Zach Levine. We don't care about Zach Levine. Can they get in on Alex Caruso if he get becomes available? Let's explore that next. First, today's show is brought to you by Ibotta. You want to get your uh, Thanksgiving for free? How about that? Free Thanksgiving. This year, Ibotta is here to give you cash back and help make sure your Thanksgiving table is complete because who wants turkey without the gravy? Starting November 1st, all month long, for the fourth year in a row, Ibotta is giving up a 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving feast. So, this has been in effect for a couple of weeks. Just add the offers in the app to redeem everything you need to make your Thanksgiving feast complete. All you have to do is shop at your favorite retailers and upload your receipt. 
you get cash back on hundreds of grocery items, pantry goods, uh, whatever personal care, it's cash. It's not points. You can actually get that in your bank account or PayPal or on a gift card. And you can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands like Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy. Download the Ibotta app now. Use the code LOCKED to get 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving dinner starting November 1st. Just go to the App Store, Google Play, and download the free Ibotta app, I-B-O-T-T-A, I-B-O-T-T-A, and use the code LOCKED. You get your Thanksgiving dinner free. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Like I said, check out Locked On NBA. Jake Madison and I are going to cover a wild, wild night in the NBA. Fights, crazy results, uh, and Zach Levine could be traded. Who knows? We're going to cover it all. Go check that out wherever you got this podcast. All right, back to this. We're talking Since we're talking about Zach Levine there, let's talk about Zach Levine here. Not necessarily the Zach Levine trade because we don't care about that necessarily. What we care about is Alex Caruso. I think he's going to be the prize at the trade deadline. Now, whenever something like this happens and you're a good team, you say, okay, how can, how can we get in on this? How can the Celtics get in on this? Now, I know I'm the guy that said I don't expect Robert Williams to be traded because – or I don't expect to get Drew Holiday because it would take Robert Williams. And I just didn't think the Celtics had the appetite to do that. Now – I only see one way to get Alex Caruso, who makes $9.4 million, almost 9.5. That's a good price for Alex Caruso. I mean, he could really, really help this team. He's going to help somebody. Can the Celtics get Alex Caruso? It's one way, and only one way, that this can happen, and that's trading Al Horford. And I, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back and I'm going to say it again. I don't see it. Now that I don't see, I really don't see that happening because they're not going to give up another big, even though Alex Caruso can be very, very helpful. They're not, I don't think they're going to do it. I'm going to put it out there that it's possible. Alex Caruso for Al Horford, technically speaking, I'm not advocating for it. I'm not saying they should. In fact, I don't think they should. But it's the only way that I see that they can do it. Because the, you can't pile up players and aggregate a bunch of guys for Alex Caruso. You can't do that at this point. The Celtics don't have the salaries. You go down the, the list... So, obviously, Holiday, Porzingis, Tatum, Brown, Derek White. Derek White's the cheapest of them. He makes 18.3. You're not going to trade Derek White right now. So, that's not going to happen. Al Horford makes $10 million. That fits perfectly. Boom. Everyone else is at $2 million or so. And you might say, well, Peyton Pritchard makes four. Ah, but Peyton Pritchard signed an extension. That makes Peyton Pritchard what they call a poison pill. Say that. I'm going to say that on the side of my microphone so I'm not spitting into it. Peyton Pritchard poison pill. What that means is for the Celtics, when you count, when you have to do matching salaries and they have to match it pretty close, almost exactly 110%. There's almost no wiggle room. The Celtics count Peyton Pritchard as his $4 million salary, which is what he makes. The Bulls count his salary as the average of all remaining years on his deal, which pushes him up into, I mean, the average annual value there was $7 million. So he's he's up into like five and change as the average annual value, like six. And that's, that's meaningful. Because now the Bulls count them as one thing, the Celtics count them as another, which means the Celtics have to send out a certain amount of money to match, and they can only take back a certain amount of money to match. The math gets complicated, and it's difficult to pull this off. 
And on top of it, to pile up the contracts to get within 110%, well, now you have to get, what are your options? Luke Cornett, are you going to trade your your third big? You're out of bigs. Now, Namias Keita, maybe he can step up. He's starting to ramp back up with the foot injury. He'll be okay soon. Maybe he steps up. Maybe they go get somebody else. That's possible. So, but still, you have Luke Cornett at 2.4. Who are, Lamar Stevens at two. That still doesn't get the job done. You have to add another salary. Now you're sending out four for one. Well, the Bulls can't take back four players. So now you have to involve, what, a third team to maybe take? It gets more complicated. And to a point where it just doesn't, it starts to make less and less sense for all the teams involved. Now, obviously, Brad Stevens is a genius. He probably has three, four scenarios that he can probably turn to and, and maybe it makes a little bit more sense for them. I'm just saying from what I see on the outside, piling up the, the, the contracts, the Celtics just have a bunch of $2 million contracts. They're going to have to send guys out to multiple, multiple different teams, but they still have to, they still have to find ways to match salaries. So the math starts to get convoluted. So my bottom line here is the only way I believe it's possible to trade for Alex Caruso, if he becomes available, is to move Al Horford to do it. Is that worth it? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, 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 it solves, Caruso solves a problem, but you're creating a different problem by solving one right? You, you do add some, some scoring and defense to the bench that you can use, but you're taking away a very, very skilled big who does a lot of the things that aren't going to show up in the box score. It's going to be, uh, it's, it's just, it, that part doesn't make sense. Now, some people might say it does. I don't think it does. That's my, that's my opinion, but I'm just telling you it's technically possible. The other side of it is, is this, would Chicago even want that? They probably want picks. Does Chicago even want the picks that Boston has to offer? What are the other offers that are out there? Because there are going to be other offers. I'm telling you, Caruso is going to be sought after. Levine, yeah, there are going to be teams that want Levine because he's a scorer and they need scoring. But Caruso is going to be the, the more sought after guy. More teams going to be involved in the Caruso sweepstakes. Boston, I I I don't see it. I don't see it. But man, it would be fun to have him on the on on the team. It'd be great. He's exactly what the Celtics need, I think. All right. Well, I'll be back here. The schedule is post game on Wednesday night going into Thursday. So your Thursday show, this is the Wednesday show. Your Thursday show will be the post-game Philly show. I'll get Tom Westerholm on here for Thursday uh, to do the Friday show. And then on Friday, post-game Toronto, that will be your Saturday show. And then I'm back all next week with four post-games, another six podcasts day week. I'll give you a podcast on Thanksgiving because I'm here to give you – I'm here for you. I'm going to give you something to listen to while you're making your dinner, your cooking or cleaning, whatever it is. Maybe you don't want to watch football. Maybe the football games suck. Pop the podcast on, have everybody sit around, talk about the Celtics, put the YouTube stream, cast it to the TV. Boom. Done. So go check that out. Also remember, check out Locked On has launched their first ever, the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. It's locked on sports today. It's here for you. 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of locked on plus the national shows covering every league. Go to locked on sports today on YouTube. Subscribe. It's the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. Obviously I would love it if you were subscribed here also. And if you shared the podcast here, 
tell your friends when, like I said, when the family's over for Thanksgiving, tell everybody there that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, every day.